on completion of your manual swap, you're going to notice that there are a ton of check engine light or DTCs, diagnostic trouble codes, that are displaying. And that's why your check engine light is on. You can drive the car like that. But one thing that is really cool is something called the automatic transmission emulator. And that's what I'm going to install now. But first, I want to go ahead and show you all of those codes that are displayed. Solenoids, speed sensors, all sorts of stuff here. Transmission fluid, temperature. We have a lot of codes. So the emulator should help us with this. What we're going to do after we install the emulator is we're going to go back and have a look at this and see how many codes it actually cleared. This is what came in the box from Quantum Auto. This is your emulator right here. These are the optional resistors, which I am going to wire into those plugs, if you saw in my previous episode, that I brought up here. Actually, one plug has the connections that we're going to need to wire into these resistors. Right now, what happens is basically your VVTI system and your timing advance are completely whacked out. So that's what this thing does. It's gonna hopefully restore a whole bunch of the, or get rid of all those codes and restore a bunch of power. Included in this kit also are some wiring instructions, but you're gonna need to go and do some research on your own. You're gonna need to go and figure out the circuits on the ECM, which is under this box lid. You're gonna need to figure out what you, get, what you gotta tap into with this. Well, I'm gonna show you guys for the GS400, but keep in mind the 430 and the 300 might be completely different as far as wiring goes. One more thing, and that's a heat sink. You're gonna want a heat sink to mount your resistors to because those things get pretty hot. What I'm gonna do is actually mount these on the bottom side of this. And one of my good locations here is probably like right here. I actually had this laying around, so I won't have a link to it. It's too big, so you should get a smaller one, but I just had it laying around and I actually cut it to make it smaller. So I'll mount it on the back there. start with SLN. This is basically what you're going to need to do for every single resistor out of so three of them total. I don't have to show you each and every one of these but I basically soldered an extension on and now I'm going to use heat shrink to protect it right there. Same thing on this one right there and then I crimped and soldered a connector on as well and I like to use heat shrink on that. I'm just going to get that all put on nicely. So this is the idea right here. So you can also bend these a little bit if you need to. to your ECU. I'm going to show you on the GS400 the appropriate pinouts and which wire on the AT emulator goes where. Remember, if you don't have a GS400, you're going to really have to do some homework here to make sure this gets hooked up properly. These are my notes for the emulator and the ECM and which wire goes where and why. For example, let's take the first wire number one is red on the emulator. It needs to go to pinout E616, which is a black wire with a red stripe. And that is the B plus circuit. According to this, you're going to actually just tap that. You're not going to cut. You're not going to sever it and connect to it. So I'm just going to tap that wire right there. This is that wire right here. So I'm going to expose it and I'm going to take the red emulator wire, which you can see right here. 
and I'm going to grab some of that plus B by just wiring it in right here. Next is E317 on the GS400, and that is the brown ground wire right there. The black wire from the emulator is going to wire into this one. Okay, everything should be wired up properly. You can see I used heat shrink and electrical tape wherever it was needed. I'll clean it up. I just want to make sure that the car will run first. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in all these connectors and then I'll give it a go. Hmm. So Park shows up now. That's interesting. That was never there before. So that's a good sign. Let's take a look at the emulator and see if there's LED lights blinking on it with the ignition in the on position. Okay, I guess that's good. <laughs> wow, no check engine lights. All right, I guess I'll put this thing back together. That was a difficult install. You gotta have the correct wiring pinouts. You gotta kinda know what you're doing with wiring. I'm not the best at wiring, but I think I figured it out. Almost all the codes are gone. I cleared the remaining codes that initially turned on. I'm ready for a test drive to go see how this thing does. Well, driving around the city, it's fun. Power is restored. You're only gonna have one check engine light, or DTC, if you did it right and that would be the 1780 code. So if you have the P1780, that is normal. 